today I want to show you how I remove um, tattoos and inconsistencies that I don't want in my image. Um, so the idea behind this image or this piece is Pride and Prejudice Zombies. If you haven't seen it, definitely uh, check it out if you're a big zombie fan or if you're a Halloween fan like us in this household. We, uh, we're a little bit obsessed with Halloween, obviously. Um, so this is the S uh, straight out of camera image. I've gone ahead and made my wafing changes and uh, some color changes. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the layer. I just wanted you to see the straight out of camera. So here's my image when I've made some base changes. Of course, I'll go back in and fix things that I don't want. But um, as you can see, my model is um, heavily tattooed, not heavily tattooed, but she's tattooed. Um, and I don't feel like it fits the aesthetic of the image. So I'm going to remove all of these. So first off, I'm going to duplicate my layer by hitting Control J. I'm on a PC. Um, so of course my methods are not necessarily what other people use. If there's another way for you to do this, then by all means, this is just what works for me. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start to remove this tattoo. So with the patch tool, I'm selecting the area and I'm just going to drag it over. until I feel like I'm in a spot where I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to take my clone, oops, my clone brush, and I'm going to drop my opacity down to let's say 30 and see how that works. I'm going to source from an area quite close to the dark that I want to get rid of. And I'm just going to start cloning away the dark area. Then I'm going to go back in with my patch tool again and select the area and drag it down. All right, so for now, obviously we can still see a little bit of the tattoo, but for now I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go work on the other areas. So I'll basically do the same thing Oops, with my patch tool. And my clone tool. I'm going to lower the hardness of my brush a little. I generally like a really soft brush. Um, my brush size, I um, change according to um, the hardness. So like if I wanted my edge really hard, sorry, I shouldn't say that. So my brush size, I generally always leave on really, really soft. And if I want a sharper edge, I'll generally zoom in really tight and get the sharper edge that way. So anyway, so we've gone ahead and cleaned that up right now to where I'm comfortable or almost comfortable. I'm going to scoot on over. Where's your other ones? I'm going to do this one. Now for this, because um, the black is so close to the black of the background, what I want to do is actually up my opacity to 100% and then I'm going to clone the side of her arm here. And correct it that way. And then I'm going to use my patch tool C 
same thing down here. Um, so I want to clone from, or sorry, I want to patch from an area where the skin texture is similar. So I'm actually going to drag up to her hand here, just because the skin texture is quite similar. And I feel like um, that's probably the best area <laughs> for us to clone from. So again, I'm going to um, select my clone tool, which is S for shortcut keys. Uh, I'm going to lower my opacity and I'm just going to fix some of these areas. Again, I'm going to go to my patch tool, which is J. Now, of course, we all know that I, I edit a lot uh, with my skin, and I haven't done any skin editing yet. Um, so all of these color uh, differences and things like that will be fixed um, later on when I go in and I do my skin retouching. But for now, we're just getting the larger areas of tattoos and imperfections out of the way. If you hear snoring, I swear it's not me. I have a a nine-year-old pug who likes sleeping directly under my feet when I edit. So he uh, he was quite quiet when I started this, and now he has decided that he's going to sleep and snore. Actually, his snoring is sort of him living, too. He uh, literally snores all the time. Okay, so... <coughs> excuse me so I'm happy in general with how this looks of course there's color differences here and I want to fix here uh, but like I said I'll do that when I do my skin retouch so there's the before and there's the after um, so now what I want to do is fix my skin so I'm going to do this as follows um, I'm going to just merge these layers and I'm going to create two more layers. I'm going to call this uh, my blur layer. I'm going to call this my texture layer. Now I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to set it uh I guess around there. Sorry, I should have turned off my texture layer. So I'm just blurring out imperfections and inconsistencies. Um, then I'm going to go up to my texture layer and I am going to go to image, apply image. I want to have uh, the blur layer selected and I want to have it on subtract. And you're going to have your scale on 2 and your offset at 128. You're going to hit OK. And you're going to change it to... What am I doing? Linear light. Sorry, guys. That was a really big brain fart. <laughs> Um, now what I also want to do is add another layer in the middle and I, I feel like this is really what makes the image. It creates that surreal look, that painted look. Those are things that are really important for me um, when I'm creating my art. I'm going to merge 
Joe's, oops, I'm going to zoom in and choose my clone tool and just clone again around her finger because I don't like the way that looks. All right, so now I'm going to duplicate my layer and I duplicate, I have a tendency to merge my layers down um, when I'm happy with the results of whatever um, action I had just done. So like skin retouching or dodge and burn. Um, I guess it is destructive. I just feel like once I, I'm in a place where I'm happy, I don't want to go back. That's my creative process. I think probably because I'm an, an artist. So when you're painting or drawing, you're, you know, any changes that you make, you have to fix mistakes or you have to, you know, build from those mistakes. So when I'm at a point where I feel like I have created something that I, that I like, it doesn't make any sense for me to want to go back to the beginning. Worst case scenario, you know, I've like, I'm the whole, you know, Pride and Prejudice is zombie one, Pride and Prejudice zombie one B, Pride and Prejudice zombie two. Like I have a tendency to save my files like that. So I can always go back um, in my, my history, in my saving history and open up another file if I want. So that's never really a concern for me. I know some people have a bit of issue with the way that I work in that aspect, but yeah, it's just how I do it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead. I want to get rid of all these. So I'm going to choose my spot healing brush. And I want to get rid of all these little stray um, pieces of yarn, I guess, the pieces of the dress. So I have a tendency to flip between um, the spot healing tool and the patch tool for stuff like this. And I, I generally, I'm pretty fluid uh, flipping between them. It's not really one or the other. I generally just, uh, it's trial and error. Um, so the only other thing I wanted to show you was um, this prosthetic piece that she had applied. This is my makeup artist. Um, the model is actually the makeup artist as well. So this prosthetic piece that I applied, I don't want these edges. I want it to look natural. Now I'll go in <clears throat> afterwards with my painting and I'm going to um, fix some of the shadows and add some dimension and some glossiness to this prosthetic um, to make it look more realistic. But of course, this area here is not going to look realistic in any aspect. So uh, the only way, sorry, the way I'm going to do this is, again, my patch tool. And I'm just going to select the hard edges and get rid of any of those shadowed pieces that I don't like. Now I'm pulling this area when I'm selecting, I'm pulling up to areas that have more skin texture because this is of course supposed to still be her skin. So I don't want it to have the look of a prosthetic. I want it to have the look of um, skin. So there we have um, the tattoo removal and the blemish removal. I'll take you back to the beginning and show you what we started with. So this was our starting and this is where we've ended up. Very simple, simple tools, um, quick method, but it works, especially for this. I think if you were doing, you know, like closer high end retouching, of course, you'd want to take it a little bit further and be more careful but for what I'm doing uh, this is where I'm happy and now what I would do is take it in paint over my image create some dimension create some um, painted looks 
and uh, color grading and that type of thing. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this short little recording. Um, hopefully I can get rid of that chunk where I froze. Uh, yeah, and have a good day. I'll talk to you guys later.